everyone. This is Mama Otter. Uh, some of you may have seen me before making different types of jewelry, and today uh, my assistant and I, um, who I uh, got at the Minnesota State Fair, Mr. Audie Tattoo, on my right arm there, um, we are going to make a hand knotted necklace of chrome diopside beads. Uh, this is the actual core that I'm going to use, and I don't want to put it down because if I do, it kind of might get tangled up. So. I've already put the clasp on one end of it so that I don't have to worry about getting glue on my fingers while I'm on the video because I don't like nasty paws. Um, so to do this, you're going to need a couple of things. And that will start with uh, the glue that I used to glue the clasp on, which is the Amazing Goop. And that can be purchased at Amazon or probably any other craft store. It's a pretty good glue. Um, it requires about 24 hours to dry. You can also use uh, jewels, epoxy, or other uh, cement. Another essential tool in the uh, library would be your beading cord. Um, I use the Griffin. This is a size six. Um, these are two yard packages. They have a number, a needle attached to them. A number six is equivalent to approximately 0.7 millimeters in diameter. Uh, there's a size chart online that you can access that will tell you more information. Um, to attach the clasp, I use uh, these here in this bag, they're called bead tips, and they're like, or also called clamshells, and they open, and uh, they're already open in the bag, and then you put the knot inside the little clamshell that you glued, and then you shut it, and then these are the jump rings that you use, and they're open, so all you have to do is kind of give them a little twist, and uh, make sure that they open and then you can just close them and then I put a magnetic clasp on the end of the needle and as you see if you give it a pull it comes off and I've got one piece in both hands and then it just snaps back together. They're quite strong, um, they hold up quite well I find. And of course your main item that you're going to need would be your beads. These are the lovely chrome diopside beads, they're rondelles with round spacers in between and it's going to make a nice chunky uh, necklace once I'm through hand knotting it. And what I use for this project is a hand knotter tool. Um, and right now it has a little cap over it so that it protects the little knob uh, or the little sticky up thingy. I don't know what you want to call it. Um, and so you want to take that off and put it over to the side. And then you have your little needle thing. And so now what I would do, each pack of these, uh, these cord packages, this type, this particular Griffin type, comes with a pre-strung little wire needle that you can use. And I usually, you can either string your beads on all at once, or you can string them on a few at a time. And for this exercise, I'm just going to string on a few at a time just because, I don't know if I'll finish this necklace today. One of the beauties that I like about hand knotting is each bead is knotted in between so that you don't have to worry about them coming apart. You don't have to worry about it, you know, falling off. If you need to stop in between, you can. So I'm just uh, cutting the string here and losing beads. Oh, here. Hang on. Losing beads. Losing beads. Okay. Okay. Losing beads. <laughs> losing beads. Few more than I wanted to take off, but hey, we're live uncensored, so that's all good. And so, what you do is you find your needle that kind of ran, ran away on me. Um, <laughs> too many things in my paws here. And you would string your bead through, yes, through your needle. And it goes, of course, it goes on to the thing. And then you've got these little teeny tiny beads in between. I do not relish working with, oh, that was actually not bad. I was about to say I don't generally relish working with small beads, but these actually have really good holes, and they're going on quite well. Um, another advantage to hand knotting sometimes is, oh, sorry, if you have smaller beads, such as pearls or something that maybe doesn't have a good, Oh dear. Oh, okay, we're good. We're good. Um, 
such as pearls or something that may not necessarily have the biggest holes in the world, you can knot them and it will make life much easier and it's more secure instead of just having to use a thinner cord and hoping it holds up. So now I have four beads on. I have two of the larger ones and two of the smaller ones. So I usually start at the shorter end of the necklace. And basically you take your short end and you make a loop and you pull your beads and clasp or whatever you happen to have through the loop. So you have your nice cooperate with it. You have your nice loop. And then you place the loop over the hand knotter tool. And so right now it's kind of loose. And then you hold the one side with your hand so that um, you're not it doesn't jump off. And you pull it tight. So that's what it looks like when it's pulled tight. Um, and then you simply pull it off the um, knotter and your knot is, is snug up against the bead. And there you can see the knot is nice up against the bead and they don't move. And so then you pull your next bead down. And this one is one of those small spacer beads. And again, you go through your, um, your, your bead that you've already done and you make a loop and you place the loop on the hand knotter and you pull it tight. And I, 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 I usually like to kind of push it down because you want to get it pretty good up against that little post. And then you pull it off. And as you pull it off, and of course the magnetic thing sticks to it, that's good. Um, as you pull it off, you kind of pull with your other hand um, to snug it down. And so then it gets nice and tight and it's snug, but yet you can still see the bead is nicely popping out there. And it's giving you a little bit more spacing in between your beads. Then you pull your other bead down and you bring it out and about. And oopsie. Um, and you let it get tangled up. No. Um, you make your loop again and you pull your loop tight. And you pull it off. And again, and then you pull. And again, it's pretty much repetitive. I like to um, sit and do this when I'm reading a book or watching TV because it can be very relaxing and it's just repetitive motion and it doesn't really take that long to make. This one's going to take a little longer because some of the beads are smaller, but you know, if you're doing, you know, any good sized beads, I mean, it doesn't take very long to do. Um, and you can either string the whole strand, which I usually string the whole strand. Um, this time I didn't just for expediency sake because I wanted to show, um, I wanted to be able to show the whole strand, but, um, I mean, you can already see it's starting to kind of form a little inchworm necklace there. Um, and it just, it, it'll it take probably, I would guess, maybe an hour to an hour and a half to do this necklace, if that. And then, of course, I'll do the same thing with the other end of the clasp. I'll put another bead tip on, and I'll connect the jump ring to this end of the magnetic clasp where the little loop is um, right there. And that will close the clasp, and then I'll be able to wear the necklace. And... The glue, like I said, takes about 24 hours to dry, so I usually tend to kind of sit them somewhere um, where they can lay flat, where no, no pressure is on the clasp, and then they can just kind of do their own thing while the glue dries. Um, and for those of you who might be curious, I do have an Amazon handmade shop. Um, I will link that link below in the comments. Um, and you might have also seen my other videos where I make a uh, wire link necklace, and I also make a uh, wire wrapped otter pendant, and I make um, squirrel charm earrings, and I have some other uh, videos. So I've done quite a few different uh, techniques of jewelry making. So if you're interested, um, you can check those out, and I will be sure to comment with the uh, page, with my Amazon page. You can check that out. I also have some cute. Uh, seasonal Halloween items that I have up, some candy corn earrings, some, uh, of course, the squirrels that I made for the other video are for sale. Um, so be sure to check that out, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you are into making jewelry yourself, uh, pick up a hand knotter. I know um, Jewelry TV sells them, Fire Mountain Jam sells them. They have different styles, too. This is just the one that I have for this particular task here. Um, and, and it works pretty good, so if you're looking to expand your jewelry making techniques, this is a good way to do it.